Okay, let's start, guys. Well, excuse me all, because I am a little bit sick. And I lose my voice. Because of such kind of illness, such kind of people, kind of virus. I will um, speak a little, make only a few points of my, uh, the things that I want to do. Uh, share with you and I hope that we would have maybe better conversation with questions and uh, just a few points and I will give the word to Professor if you want. Uh, the thing that I wanted to speak about and that's why I choose this room uh, even if it's noisy is this and this, the old paradigm, the new paradigm, uh, because it's very good <laughs> drought here. You know. uh, maybe I will make some connection with the uh, evolution of the human thinking and feeling and uh, uh, communi communication with each other and with the environment. Uh, Sorry. Wow. Uh, на Половината време го прекарваш извън кадър, а съм близо до тебе, защото uh, да не, да не okay. викаш. Понеже те боли гърлото, така че гледай върху да се концентрираш на едно място. It's also hard for me because I, I have time. Ако искаш се отдалеча, ако искаш се отдалеча, обаче трябва по-силно. Just like in the TV, in the television. I cannot think without moving. Something specific. You're like a rapper. We have a saying that a human being is a human being while they are on the road. Well, and Thomas Kuhn wrote in the early 60s uh, a very famous book the, about scientific revolution, and, uh, the changes of the scientific paradigms. And it's according for the changes uh, of the uh, physics, physics before Einstein, and physics after physics after Einstein, after the theory of the uh, relativity. And after the whole uh, quant theory, and all this uh, revolution in the thinking, in the mind, in the observing of our environment, of uh, ourselves, that happened there. But in the same time, in the school, in the lessons of my own daughters, they, uh, well, that's happened in the 20s, uh, in the 20th century, it was maybe one century ago, in our days. And uh, in, in the same time, one century after that, in the lessons of, our, of my own uh, daughters, with my lessons when I was a, a child, and also in our days, there are only the Newton's paradigm. And it's only an example because it's uh, interconnecting with everything. And uh, what's the difference between these um, two paradigms? I think that the evolution of human brain uh, and it's connected, it's very interconnected with the evolution with the human culture and society. I, uh, speak about uh, such kind of thing like social cultural environment of the human and, um, uh, because uh, like the time and uh, the space are one and the same thing I think that the culture and the society are one and the same thing and also it's that's the human nature for me and uh, in, uh, when uh, the uh, society, the culture and the society become more and more complex. 
it's much more complex than the natural systems, the ecological systems. The, uh, uh, and the, all the other kind of complex systems that we know. The human being and the interconnection between the different human beings. And the interconnection between the human beings and the all other beings and all other uh, environments is very, very, may, maybe the more, much um, more complex than we can ob ob obviously imagine at all. And that's why we have to we, uh, lose the orientation in our um, environment, in our social cultural environment. We just are lost in there because it's too complex for our own brain to understand it, to act uh, like that, to uh, do something about it. And we have to think something very simple to understand these kind of complex things. And that's why uh, it uh, becomes this kind of simple thing. Simpli simplification. And, uh, well, and uh, do you know what this structure is? It's a pyramid, it's an artificial structure. Do you know why uh, there is such kind of uh, Structure like a pyramid, it's, it's connected with the architecture. It's the easiest way to build because of the gravitation. One of the first buildings was such kind of pyramids because you just put the stones, an uh, easier way to build with stones. Just you make such kind of a hill and uh, make this hill abstract because the hill, the living, the natural hill is such kind of something like this. Because in the uh, real life, in the nature, there are no lines. There are curves, like the tree, like in the tree, like in our own body. There is no straight lines. The straight lines are something artificial. And uh, that's why it's something like a compa uh, compass because this, uh, for understanding the things. But it's not the real thing. And we began to miss this abstract composition from the straight lines, from the, this kind of object like pyramids, like um, quarters and so on and so on, to think that are real things, but they are not real things. They are only here real things. They are not real things in our environment, in our body, uh, in our way of thinking, living, Breathing and so on. The uh, the real are the complex system, not the simple system. And uh, when the scientists began began uh, began to uh, uh, investigate the very little part uh, particles. Par particles like quants and photons and so on and so on, wave waves energy and uh, particles and also uh, like uh, the, these particles, like the photons, that they are waves and particles in the same time, such kind of no, all very... All the, all the are. Yeah. Uh, they began to observe that because these particles are very small and they are very sensible. And you uh, cannot uh, force them to uh, be like these this artificial ideas in your mind. They just move like the living things in the in the world. They don't want to um, do such kind of things what you are imagining today. They just uh, 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 the the principle of the variety of the uh, curves and so on and so on, that is connected with the living, with the real life, with the living things. That is not fake because all of this kind of structure are just fake structure. If you want to uh, understand something, you have to, uh, to have this kind of structures in your mind. But if you want to create something real, something living, you have to put this on the trash because it doesn't work. This kind of thing works. It's only a compass. And uh, 
What's the new paradigm? I will, I will tell you only three or four things that are very important in this. Uh, the first thing is um, synergy between all the, all the parts of the real uh, organic complex system like the human culture and society and like the human being itself. Uh, be, because there are uh, systems like uh, the breathing, the uh, blood pressure, and so on and so on, and they all work parallel but interconnected together, and they are organized by themselves. You cannot organize it by your brain, you cannot make orders to uh, your uh, heart or to your cells to be. Um, you just can. Uh, use what they already doing. You can only rule them in their own way, but not in your uh, artificial way to do, uh, to do this. And also this, the other thing is, uh, well, there is on, uh, another architectural structure. It's the bridge or the Egyptian, Egyptian um, uh, so-called uh, Egyptian ark where there is no central stone, but that's not true. That's because we uh, think false. We think that there is only one center. Uh, here we think that in, on the pyramid this is the center, the highest place. Um, but maybe the center is here, 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 or even in the pyramid. And uh, in these uh, uh, Stones, there is no central stones, but the real thing is that every one of these stones are the central stones. And also in the new science, uh, this is the way of thinking, the polycentrism, because the whole paradigm is monocentristic. And that's why we make also our economy, like uh, mono agriculture, uh, the, the industry, the uh, uh, political structures, and so on, in this. Uh, monocentristic way, but it's too simple to work. It just destroys the society, it destroys the nature, it destroys ourselves like human beings. And we have to move in the evolution of our mind and understand that uh, the development is another thing. It's uh, uh, evolution of our levels. It's not like this to go straight there on the top and to be successful uh, nowadays and forever, because you cannot be successful forever. If you are successful in you know, one thing, you cannot be, uh, you just uh, destroy the system and go down. Uh, and when you are a teacher in the school, the polycentristic uh, opinion is to work with the children as they are your own teachers in somehow, in some way, because uh, in these uh, years, maybe around 14, the brain capacity and the emotional capacity and the thinking capacity is on the highest level, it's on the peak. And after that, we just move forward with our experience, but in all other things, we just fall down. Like intellectual capacity, like emotional capacity, like communication capacity, only the experience, uh, only the stereotypes make uh, possible to uh, get forward, but uh, like a strong uh, mind, like an invention, like a creative, we just fall down. And it's natural. It's the, thing, the things are just like that, you cannot change it. And that's why we have to move on other level, because all the structures are real levels in the first pyramids are on the levels like in Mexico. Uh, terrace. The, and uh, and uh, the development is to make the evolution on the different level. And that's uh, and if uh, this evolution could be sustainable when you go to the different level of thinking, to the different level of feeling to the different level of communicating with each other, uh, it is why it, when 
it is working, it is living, it is real. And when it is fake, when it is false, it doesn't work, it just destroys all the living and real things. And uh, my that's something that uh, um, the scientists uh, in different sciences, also in social sciences, like in anthropology. And also the third thing is the uh, artist and the viewers. I don't know how it's translated in English. Well, the people who are public and who are artists. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that in the uh, quant, uh, quant theory, that you, uh, when you uh, are public for some process in this quantum, you are also artists in the process. You just, uh, you are activist oh, in this process. Uh, you are the, active. The observer, the observer the observed. is part of the reality. Yeah, the observer he he the cannot observer. exclude himself from it. Uh, it's uh, also. Uh, began this idea in anthropology, anthropology in the 50s and 60s years. And there are many kind of um, names of this kind of sciences. Uh, there is no usual name for this new paradigm, like uh, quantum theory, theory of the chaos, uh, theory of the complexity, uh, also cyber, cyber, cybernetics, um, the theory of the evolution of the systems and the theory, well, in the eight, uh, eighties, from the French scientist uh, Pierre Allen about the holographical universe, yes, absolutely different uh, kind of uh, understanding the reality. And why this doesn't come in our schools for hundred years, for a century now? This is for me is a question. I don't have any answers. Yeah, thank you. That was for me. Any questions? Anything you want to answers. discuss? Any answers? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Uh, just uh, one question uh, is. Uh, I like the, the principle with steps, but um, when you say that uh, even if the normal reality just leads to collapse uh, because uh, maturation, normal maturation of the system, uh, if there is such step to sustain someone to grow, uh, is it still collapsing? Or is it maybe can just collapse from one step? There is a risk to collapse every time. Now uh, we are first a bioorganism, but after that, on the other step, we became a cultural, a civilized, a civilized a sociable human being with a very, very complex structure on the other level. But you are in the risk to collapse in every time. The, the, because we could destroy uh, ourselves because of this complexity. Uh, we just uh, have to survive somehow and to make other level to survive because we are on the level that we just can destroy with this social cultural level that we are. You are in the risk every time. It's the, maybe one of the laws of the living thing. I would just like to make an addition. Uh, in Western thinking, we are very fond of trends like this. Etc. No. In Eastern thought, they prefer trends like this. If you have studied uh, Chinese history, for instance, etc., they work with cycles, not with this idea of progress in one direction. And if you look at, uh, at the way a system evolves, and there is peak, then there is uh, descent, then another system appears, there is a peak, there is descent, uh, you can conclude for yourself which is closer to reality. But 
But these ones are, are really good when you look at economics because, for instance, this is how predictions are made. Like, uh, people can't think that there will be a crisis when they see that things are growing up. They think they will just keep growing up. But that doesn't happen, right? So, usually you have, you know, peak, like the post of the peak crisis, peak crisis. Yeah. Uh, I think that the best we can hope for is something like this. We can't hope not to have downward slopes. This is not realistic. This is not how processes go. So we have to be prepared for collapses, but you know, in such a way that we can continue and get a bit higher on the next stage. This is also related to spiral development and other more <laughs> esoteric ideas, but. It's, it's interesting to compare the, the two different But if you look around yourself, all the forms are like this, only the artificial forms, not very beautiful. These um, quadrant blocks are not like this, like a way. May I also say Thank you very much for all. Can you wait maybe that uh, I finish and after we all kind of questions? Yeah, but you can ask maybe. I can, I can, I can uh, answer after. Otherwise, we start to debate now with him and with yes. him and yeah. with everybody, yeah. and I cannot talk. So Peter asked the question. I'd like to answer the question he asked. This way, we don't have matters to talk about. Serge, yes. uh, are you going to stand there? Yeah. So you asked the question, Peter. Why we cannot get to the or to there, okay? It is very important. If you try to push it, I cannot, it's bigger than me. If I try to attract it, yeah, I cannot fix it. But my mind is focused on that. Just here, I cannot move. Always action, reaction. If fix. If I just think I'm free, I can move my tummy. I can move everything. I can move everything. I can kill it. Understand? Yes. So, what I want to show you is, there is no secret. Peter did a bit of... Uh, Demonstration. I'm going to talk to the point of view of the scientist to explain that. In martial arts, as in life, there is no secret. You will see why I took these two leaves. Beginners will start to see that. Masters just turn around. Turn around. Okay? So, point is, let's see, how do you observe? Science starts from there. What do we observe? You've got two leaves. What is leaves? Just continuing of a tree or maybe of a seed, but you don't see the seed. Okay? For an artist, if you put two leaves here with pins and you threw painting, after you will have a shadow. Okay? <coughs> I learned that when I was a little boy. So the point is, to get back to the subject, how do we do education? What do we learn? How do you learn? When you are little, you are socialized by your family first. With values and education of your family. And as you grow up, you go to school, primary school and secondary school and university and whatsoever, you learn by the environment, your culture, and whatever. So you have many, many, many impacts, many items coming to your brain. It's very difficult, isn't it? You learn a lot, a lot, a lot, every day, every day, you see a lot of things, but you don't see nothing. Because the essential is not what you learn, it's a method. 
you learn just to put in category things. Like anthropologists, like sociologists, like jurists, uh, lawyers, like everything, you are creating categories. This is good, this is no good. This is no good, this is good. I didn't tell, tell something like that, but just mix I am, of them. I am explaining my way. <laughs> you explain your way after we have debate if you want. So, science is a way, for me, not looking for Peter, is a way to set in category six. We have social classes, category, and so on, and so on, and so on. Woman, man, whatever. If I ask everybody here, what are you? Somebody is going to tell me it's a girl. How do you know it's a girl? How do you know? If I ask everybody, what is uh, these things here? Everybody say it's Frank, it's a boy. How do you know? Based on stereotypes. <laughs> stereotypes. For sure. Because somebody told you when you've got short hair, you're a boy. Long hair, you're a girl. Because we have seen boys and we have some idea. That's be. right. And in some culture, you have the third sex, like in Quebec, in Eskimos, whatsoever. Yeah. So some people have no sex or different sex, or maybe third or fourth. You say, this is a professor. This is a professor, or Frank is a professor, Jeremy is a elder already. So you get between girls and guys from your age. Because everybody told you it's good. In some culture is not working like that. Old women are educating young boys, even for sex or whatsoever, and old men are educating or marrying young girls, whatsoever. And if we get back to nature, which is not an example for me, a kind of ideal model, pattern, you can see that even animals, you know, even animals, young female, check on marriage or make couple with or the male, because they know where the water, they know where the food, and so on. So, just everything you know, everything you do, without realizing, realizing with conscience, and that's the word. It's just imitating and reproducing what you learn. You never create. Yes. Unless you break all the pattern you have first absorbed, so first you know, put it to yourself. On the way, I'm, I can talk about that very free because I'm not just only an anthropologist. I practiced for 30 years Aikido, I did uh, Shiatsu, I did a uh, lot of things, and I've been breeded, raised in a kind of free school, in a method like, uh, for example, if you find this book, Free Children of Summer Hill, the author is A.S. Nail. So I've been raised with free method, like method Freinet, Montessori, everything. Mm -hmm. So you can find that. Creativity is very important. Creativity, like said Peter, but creativity is not coming by nothing. It's not just because you let a child making poo everywhere, peeing everywhere, eating shit, that is going to be creative. Not at all. In whole education, there are scale. When you learn judo, when you learn how to do yoga, writing, what you do first? What do you do? Observe. Yeah, and so what? Imitate. Imitate. So in one way, you have the little boy here, you know, observing the teacher, which is observing his master or older, which is observing what grandparents and everybody were doing before him. And here you have a society pattern of education usually. You add mythology, you add values. This is good, this is not good. Why don't you eat snails? We eat snails. Why do I don't eat cows or, or dogs? Because it is cultural. So, in one way, we imitate, and you are not free. Peter is right on that point. Nobody is free unless you break this old pattern. Which means you are reproducing everything, you are going to get married, you are going to make children, teach the same shit, same pattern. This is good, this is not good. I am a good guardian, and so what? 
who cares about what you are? I have a French, and what? Let's be frankly okay. I'm a bit uh, not aggressive, but provocating, you know, so let's be frankly. I have a boy, and who cares? And you are a girl, what's your age? I don't care. I can make you a baby if you want, or if I want. Okay, dog? So all these patterns are modeling your life, and it's like chains. So you never look at the leaves, really, if I take the sample of the leaves. You think, because, ah, it's leaves, and oh, it's finished. I don't observe the leaves anymore. The scientist is going to see how the leaf is growing. What are they drawing? Can I see through the leaves? What about the surface, the thickness, taste, everything? Because we observe, we learn with our senses. We perceive life and environment with our senses. View, hear, taste, touching, everything, and many other senses that maybe you don't know. Maybe nine or ten of them. When Jerry is go to Australia, he doesn't know Aborigines. First, he hears sounds. They don't speak the same way. Even Australian people, ah, I got my when people don't speak the same English. They are joking and saying, we speak four or five different English you know, languages. When you look at me, you look with your eyes. You are, your eyes are already making me in categories, but nowhere is average, uh, is professor, not swing very quick in your brain and everything. And oh, I am in little box. So in one way, in one way very few people are living the right life. When I say the right life, it's no question of value, it's just the life. Because in fact, you live the life people taught you to live. I have to be a good girl, I have to be a good boy, I have to love each other, I have to have sex with that person and not that person. This one is boy and girl, there's no middle average, you know, a kind of transsexual or whatever. Uh, I like black people because I'm not racist, but what about Roms? Ah, oh, no, Roms, no, no, no possibilities. Ah, no, we are fucked with those Roms in Bulgaria, so it's not a category, you know. So, uh, I like this guy because he's very intelligent. He read a lot. And I don't like this guy because he's got here in work in garden. And you are always, all your life, all the day, fucking day long, discriminating. Discriminating people discriminating the real, discriminating your way of doing things, way of loving things, people, etc., etc. So even when you think, and I'm very hard, very tough on that, even when you think about love, you are not in love, you don't even know what you are talking about. I love this girl, I love this guy, I want to marry with him, I have a baby. You are just making a pattern, keep going on. Same pattern, every time, like animals. That's just animals, because you are female and male, and you have to get together to make reproduction of places and whatever. You cannot understand love. You cannot understand love as far you are discriminating. Love has no form. Love is not a category. Love is just a state of mind. It's not somebody. I'm not going to be in love with him, or with Aurélie, or with Frank, or with you, or whatever, and I will be saved by love. Because I'm kind of a nevrosis uh, person, you know, and uh, my nevros and your nevros are complementary, so why don't we add together? <laughs> oh, and, I, and I'm looking for my middle, you know, part of uh, orange. I am, I'm looking for my half, I'm looking for my half. In your vocabulary, you always talk about shit, about your half about somebody, but what you don't know, you are already on tire. And if you are in the state of love, inside yourself, within yourself, that's what we do, we should develop with children. At that moment, you can meet somebody in the same state of love. Love is not a mythology. Love is not just a legend. Lot of prophets, lot of people, philosophers and whatever, Bateson, uh, you talk about spirituality space on you. You read about the philosophers like Nietzsche or whatever. They talked about love after very hard experience. Poets are talking about love and so on. But it's not love to someone. It's developing 
within yourself, new sight, new way of looking at the world. Why should I be harder with that guy? Because I don't like him, he's got little beard and glasses and hair. Instead of be harder with that one, or this guy who is a bit bigger and whatsoever, or this girl because she has big boobs and the other one has little boobs, you know? We are always discriminating, always and always. And you are doing that with your brother, your sister, your mother. I don't want to be like my brother. I don't want to be like my brother. I make better studies than my brother, you know. I'll be rich. And she, what? You are going to die one day. That's the only, the only destiny you have. And I'm not catastrophic. Uh, bit like in the ideal of a new age and uh, maybe this world, this species, whatever, I don't care about that. The life will still go on, even if men are not on earth anymore, but uh, I don't care. What's important is now, here, right now, who am I? What do I want for me, for the people I love, for my environment? like to have good wine and not uh, fucking wine with uh, chemistry inside, like to eat good food, I like to have a good wine with my friend, and so on and so on and so on. I want the best for my children. That's it. So I can educate children to not be in that discrimination and not reproduce kind of pattern that we had received from our parents, our societies, our community and everything. That's the right question. That means somewhere, if I say to a boy, this is bad, you can kill somebody, I'm giving a value. Killing is not good. Knife and killing and significant significance. Knife, killing, na na na, somebody, life is precious. I'm giving different values. But I say, I can say, you don't use properly the knife. Knife is very good. You can cut wood, you can cut hair, you can make your nails, you can open a bottle. You know? This is bad. Don't play with that. Don't play with that. You can burn yourself. Still values. Burning is not bad. Make a fire like you did last night, maybe. You can make a fire, have friends around, grill sausages and whatever, and sing and drink. So, life can be good. So, education, different way, is always a problem of imitation and to not be in the judgment. Judgment is very important. So, we have to do something. For example, if I am now taking again. Julien, bien Julien, s'il te plaît. If I take Julien, for example, no, because demonstration is the best way, you understand. If, uh, if I take Julien, for example, it means jambe devant, c'est là, c'est là, c'est là. Not devant, hey, stabilize your weight, okay. See, if I want to kill Julien, it will take me two seconds, he's dead. Two seconds, he's dead. If I want to care with Julien, showing somebody, I make demonstration, n'est pas peur. You see, here, here I can walk, here it's very strong, you know, it's way very strong. But if I walk here, here, look, ne pas peur. <laughs> Did I force? He feels something. He can feel that I don't need one, just one or two fingers, just here, his balance is broken. So that's the way I was taught by my master when I was a young student. That's the way I teach my child, because I've got many child, children with many women, so... So, the point is, is there any judgment? It's no good or not, it's just direction you give. I make him confidence because very, you know, a lot of masters in Judo, in Aikido, in anthropology, in sociology, in linguistics, whatever, I feel you feeling stupid. You don't know anything about everything. I'm going to tell you what is the truth, what, uh, where, what you have to do, and whatever. It's not that teaching. Educating children is to give you confidence. You didn't do the work I did before. It's normal. You've got to go the same way in some way. But don't worry. It's good what you do. Keep going. You have to. 
give confidence, choice. confidence, give confidence to people. And to give confidence to people, you don't have to look their boobs, nice face, big bum or whatsoever, you know, and yes. shirt. You have to go to the heart. Give confidence to people means to be welcoming them in your own heart, That's in your fair. own spirit. It's like if you attack me, if I go against him, I'm dead because he's bigger. But if I go with him in the same direction, he is dead, maybe. <laughs> Understand? So the point is, when we teach, like with Jerry, like Peter, whatever, or Gilles, or the, rather, everybody, we have our duty. And with our children, is to give them confidence. Just be what you are. You are not me. You yes. didn't do the same job. But keep going. That doesn't mean sometimes we are not hard. Hey, don't be stupid. Do what you say to me. <laughs> Understand that message? <laughs> so, confidence and to go with. You cannot reproach a young baby, young block, you know, seven year old, to have a lot of energy, to move, and everything. But sometimes, without giving it bad or bad, just putting your existence to his existence at stake and say, hey, shut up, I'm talking. Because you have to talk too, and not, ah, it's beautiful to have babies running around and they, they throw you shit and whatever, spaghetti on your, on your face or whatever. So, educating children is always to help them developing good relation good confidence to the world and a good relation with everybody. For example, if for toys, you have the right to not lend your toys to another child. But maybe you can offer different opportunities as you talk. It's not good or bad to give your toys to another child. It's stupid. What's important is you have just this opportunity. Okay, keep your choice. It's normal. It's yours. It is yours. It's part of the child. But Maybe if you lend a little bit to, to, to toys to somebody else, he will lend you your toys. So life is a question of uh, life and education is a question of exchange. Confidence, exchange, go to the heart, go with the strengths, never against strengths or energy or whatever, against the students. Students are students. There's nothing wrong about that. But they are also women, men, maybe father, mother, whatsoever. How to unify, unify all this. And that's the secret. If there is any secret, maybe the heart of the good pedagogue, no pedagogist or professor, and I'm regretting that we talk always about that with Frank, Aurélie, and Gilles Rouet, Beta. There's not so many good pedagogist and professor whatever. Professor is not having a barrier with a student based on, kind of, on some kind of ritual. Because I'm professor, you know, you have to respect me, whatever. You are respected, just respect it. Just because of what you are. If you don't deserve any respect, I piss on you, I yes. shit on you, I shit on you. I, shit on you. Yes. I don't respect people who don't respect themselves. If you start to respect yourself, people will respect yes. you. And that's the same for the children, that's the same for the student. Why should I then take Frank with, with a friend? I a shoulder like that, it's not my boyfriend, it's a friend. Why Aurélie is my student? Why sometimes working together, I cannot talk to Aurélie exact and you know, why? Or Julien, I touch, I am with, I touch, I don't make a barrier. But when I'm teaching, I am the professor. That means I have more knowledge in some way than my student. I'm not the same knowledge than another professor, so I listen to him, or he is listening to me, etc. That is exchange. That is sharing. The experience Jerry had in Australia is not mine. I'm a professor, but I still listen to him. Experience Peter is another one. That doesn't mean we are more than students or children or women or homosexual or whatever. It's not a question of quantity, of judgment. He's better than him. That's a bullshit. We are all the same. We are all the same. We are all the same. Yes. I wish you become an old woman with books down. Yeah. 
and with a lot of wiseness. <laughs> Do you understand that? Yes. Every time you breathe, you make discrimination, you discriminate. So if you want to refer to the Chinese system, Niking, for example, Niking or whatsoever, Taoism, for example, to talk about a little bit anthropology, Chinese Taoism, priest says there is a Tao. Tao has no form, in fact. It's everywhere and nowhere. At the beginning. Like Adam and Eve, you know. And after, but all that was one. And after, from a spark, something happened, and we get two. And from two, we get that, and you get that. And you have the the king with all the signs, which is the molecule of, you know, comment uh, dire le truc le pas les cellules, le génotype, le génotype, génotype. So you have that, but you have that in many legends, many many legends. If you are, if you are a bit smart, how do you make a baby? I'm not asking about position. Our baby comes out. So, don't be the shy. nature made it in a way that the gravity attracts the baby and the baby No, grows. no, no, you, you don't go so far. You make a mistake. <laughs> no, no, be simple. You have a little fish like that, cleaning, cleaning with two antennas, and this one so ovule, okay? Spermatozoid, it is, it's okay. Cellule, cell, oh. okay, no view. Egg. And this one guy in, knock on the door and say, hey, let me in. And from here, you have one cell, just one cell. How do you call the cell? What? It's the cellule that reproduces. Souche. Souche. You know, c'est le souche, comment c'est le nom en anglais uh, Basic cells which are divided in every cell, uh, liver, brain and everything. So from one cell, you have two. You have four. Some cells are so precious, like uh, original cells, c'est le souche, uh, basic uh, you know, cells. But if you take them, you can do your liver again, reproducing your liver, your lungs and so on. Huh? Stem cells. Stem cells. Stem cells. Exactly. So, so, if you look at your religion, for example, from one you become three. From one, spermatozoid, one of you divided, one pair of fists, and this three. I want to do a bit new age stuff, like Peter did. I can't tell you everything is in everything, but it's not, of, it's not enough to understand how it works. To understand how it works, we have to observe. We have to observe, and every time you have some kind of uh, kind of reticent, you know, you are reticent. He's talking to me, maybe he's homosexual, and I feel my body contracted and whatsoever, or maybe just because he's black, or maybe just because he's smelling poor, I don't know. Why am I contracting to his contact? What is it doing on me? What is it doing on me which is making me discriminate, discriminating? That's the point. So if every time you have this kind of, I cannot do that. Why should I think that I cannot do that? I can tell you about, about a big fight I had with uh, my ex-wife and his family, her family. But my daughter, she was four years old, and we were looking at basic instinct on TV. It's very violent, you know, it's good.